Hello everyone, welcome to The Showdown, where we bring clubs into the studio and we put them as a head-to-head. -head. So this week, Lee, what have you brought? Well, I've brought the TaylorMade Stealth DHY. Long iron, three iron, 19 degrees. Clubs we've probably moved away from um, and we're gonna put them up against. The title list, 505U505, which again is a three iron, graphite shaft. It's actually graphite a club. Shaft. Yeah, it's actually a club that I've actually put in the bag, but I thought these today would be quite a nice head-to-head, -head, both three irons, probably both very similar in loft, yep. and trying to do what I would think is a similar job for most golfers out there looking to possibly put a long iron stroke hybrid-y kind of feel into their golf bag. Definitely. If you haven't seen the Showdown program before, tell us what is actually going to be happening with this Showdown. So we compare these both clubs against five comparisons. Okay. So we have a technology-based one, which is distance and dispersion. Yep. Foresight gives us that detail. Yes. Then we have opinionated, which is looks, sound and feel, and then we go into technology, which has the best technology in our opinion. So they're scored out of five points each. Okay, so the idea of this is obviously these are the types of things that you would be thinking about when you were looking to buy a club yourself. And um, I think these are a pretty good head to head. So let's go and hit some shots. Okay, TaylorMade DHY to start with. If we look at looks down the ball, what you're getting, a nice thick top line here, and then all this real estate behind. So you, it gives you that confidence that this is a big chunky club that's gonna help you get the ball in the air. But the one thing I don't like about the looks is the club face, and I'll show you in a minute. It is all squished and just, for me, just doesn't look right. But sound wise, it sounds, it sounds just like a long iron, really. There's nothing offensive about it. There's nothing that stands out from it to be like anything other than what you would expect it to sound like. So sound is fine, but the face is all kinds of squished here. And for me, just don't like it. So all in all, it definitely gives me confidence to hit a long iron and I've taken long irons out of the bag, but it's, um, I just don't know if I like the look of it and could play it. But if we move on to the title list, it definitely looks more like an iron. And the reason I say that is now the top line has this like split here where the satin of the iron head comes over the top. So it differentiates and it looks more like the tightest irons do. But down at the ball, it definitely looks more like an iron. So it looks more iron shaped, the toe looks higher. So it definitely gives me that confidence that it's gonna fit into what I would want it to do for going from long iron into my own set of golf clubs. Sound and feel, I can't really differentiate between the two. They both feel great. They both sound pretty similar, so it's gonna be really hard to sort of split them on points that way. But the face itself definitely looks more like an iron than the TaylorMade does. And I understand what you're saying there, Lee, between the looks of these clubs, because I think Titleist have approached this iron, hybrid iron type of club, more from their irons, so players kind of working all the way up from their mid irons into their long irons and as a replacement of a long iron. Whereas TaylorMade possibly in this particular model have gone more along the looks of a hybrid because I see very much roundness when I look down at this TaylorMade club, which gives me the sense that it actually, it kind of wants to look like a hybrid, but it kind of plays maybe more like a long iron. So I think whether you're a player coming into a long iron or a hybrid kind of from one way or another, I think the looks are gonna be very much um, determined by what you prefer the look of. Do you prefer the confidence in the look of irons or do you prefer the confidence in the looks of woods into hybrids? So for me, looking down at the tight list, I, as a, someone who plays the tight list irons, I just see on the face point of view, I see a tight list iron when I look down at it, which you know, it gives me the confidence that I could put this in, let's say, over a, a, a three iron standard sort of bladed three iron in the set. Right out of the middle of the club, it does feel like a long iron. Um, I'm going to get slightly different feels as I move it around the face because you've got to remember, it's a hollow construction here. And one thing you've just got to be mindful of when you're playing any hollow construction club, and this is just some things that I've had in the past with hollow construction. If you tee it up too high or get it a little high on the face, 
you're going to start to see big drop-offs in those numbers of what you get from your uh, ball speed but also you're going to get like a, it's almost like a shuddering up the club um, and I've not found a club yet that has hollow construction that hasn't not given me that. And like you say, Lee, when it comes to kind of like the tailor made, you're seeing kind of a squattish kind of look down at the ball. Again, that gives me the kind of the confidence that's going to get the ball in the air a little bit more. Um, enables me to be able to tee it a little bit lower, pick it off the surface maybe a little bit easier, but definitely more rounded at the back like a kind of hybrid. And that one was a little out of the toe and did actually feel almost a bit tinny off the face in comparison to what the Titleist is. But if I hit one more and try and get it a little bit more out the middle, just like I did with the Titleist, I think we're going to probably get very similar feels with them both. Now, I know that one finished a little bit right, but I definitely felt like I got that more out of the center. Maybe club face just a fraction more open that time. But feel wise out the middle, both of them feeling very, very similar, um, a nice solid kind of iron type feel, not the tinny type of wood or hybrid feel that you get from lots of clubs. Okay, so let's talk tech and let's start with the TaylorMade DHY. As expected, TaylorMade give you speed foam, so that's a hollow body construction with a low center of gravity. A forged C300 face with ICT, which is inverted core technology, and then underneath you get a through slot speed pocket. Now we move on to the tighter list. So the U505 has a thinner forged L face and max impact technology. It has denser D18 tungsten weights for better launch, a shorter blade with a shallow face and then a wider sole at the bottom just to aid that launch. So if we just compare them side by side, we look at the weighting first. TaylorMade is visible on the bottom, whereas the tighter list is clearly internal, uh, the tungsten weightings. You have a hollow body with them both, except you're getting speed foam inside the TaylorMade. That's designed to just sort of give the acoustics a little bit of a change and maybe give it a better feel off the face. And also with them both, you're getting that wide sole, which aids turf interaction and helps that ball just launch better because there isn't a lot of loft on these clubs, let's be honest. Dan, feel and sound, which one are you giving it to? I can't determine the difference between the two of them, to be honest with you. They both feel very similar out the middle of the bat, so I'm going to give them half a point each. So okay. I can't, can't determine. No, nope, uh, same for me. They feel the same, they sound the same. They are practically the same, so half a point each for half feel and sound. Half a point each from feel and sound, okay. Looks? I think I've got to give it to the tailor-made. Really? I'm a little surprised in myself to a point because I, I, I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I, I think this looks like an iron as I look down at it with the Titleist, but then it's just got this big lump on the back yeah, yeah. and it kind of like, it looks like it's almost two separate clubs. The tailor-made, to me, it kind of, it feels like it all rolls round in one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm completely disagreeing with you and I'm yeah. gonna go with the tighter list for looks. And the reason for that is, it feels and looks to me like I've got more real estate to hit the ball. Yeah, and for someone okay. who's now struggling with long irons, that just looks so squashed and is it like more a, from top to bottom rather from, than from heel to toe? Completely because that's, toe area. Yeah, so because it's gone, it's almost shallower yeah. in that top bit. So because there's the more space here, yeah, you feel it, you've I got feel got like I've confidence. got more real estate to hit the ball because okay, I'm, I'm going to struggle. I'm struggling with long irons, which is why I put hybrids in the bag. So yeah. definitely for looks and a confidence point of view, the Titleist will get that for so me. So we're kind of split on that, aren't we? So we're split and they're split at the minute completely. So yeah. we need to go and look at the numbers. Okay, so looking at my numbers, and let's be honest, they don't make good reading, and they confirm to me why I've completely taken two and three irons out of my bag. So we start with a Taylor made, which is on this as an iron one, unfortunately. So overall distance is 213 yards, which is probably where I would, a little bit down on where I would expect a three iron to possibly go. Um, and it varies from 224 for a good strike down to 202 with an okay strike. Dispersion wise, all over the place. It's 33 yards left to 30 yards right, 60 yards dispersion left and right. So it's not a club that I would contemplate putting in the bag at the moment, certainly not until I've practiced a bit more. Moving on to the tight list, U505, doesn't make for much better reading to be honest. Average distance 204, that's four iron distance for me and it's certainly something I could 
possibly get a lot more confidence and regular with with a four iron dispersion 40 yards left 36 yards right it's just it's all over the place ball speeds are very similar 135.8 136 but all in all it's it's just not they're not clubs that i would put in the bag but distance tailor-made wins it dispersion tailor-made wins it looking at my numbers then with these two clubs now remember 20 degrees aloft in the Titleist compared to 19 degrees aloft out of the Taylor made. Now, there is a difference in loft, even though they both say three iron, and sometimes that can make a slight difference when it comes to the numbers, which is importance of being fitted properly into the club that you're going to buy. If we start off with a Taylor made, then 134.1 average ball speed miles per hour compared to 132.1 out of the Titleist, so slightly quicker, but one, one degree in difference in loft, maybe that's giving it that little bit more oomph off the face. If we look at launch, 12.9 uh, degrees of launch out of the Taylor made compared to 13.2. Again, one degree difference in loft, maybe that's helping that. And then if we look at spin numbers, 3,700 spin out of the TaylorMade compared to 3,600 spin out of the Titleist. So just slightly lower in that spin from the Titleist than I'm getting out of that TaylorMade. Peaking out 30 yards high with the TaylorMade compared to 29 yards high with the Titleist. And then 204 yard carry out of the Taylor May compared to 201 yards carry out of the Titleist. These are averages. If we went longest to longest, we got a 207 yards out of the Taylor Made and 207 yards out of the Titleist. Again, it's not always about hitting it the furthest. It's about getting your gappings right whenever you're moving around to long irons, putting them into the bag. So um, if we're doing it on, on the actual yardages, the Taylor Made just pips the Titleist by what, three yards? But what about my square yardage though, Lee? So dispersion is done on the, the ellipse, basically, yep. the circle. So the circle I've worked trust. out the, the square yardage of that circle. So yep. DHY, your square yardage is 244 yards. So that's the, the area of it. It would be 244 square yards. Yeah. Um, the tight list is 376.8 square yards. So I'm a little bit more... So you're better if your cert, your area of dispersion is is tighter with the dhy and if we look at mine i won't say the numbers because they're pretty difficult go on tell them it's like a small shop, it so, is a small shop. so with the dhy it's um 1088 <coughs> and with the tight list it's 1161 okay you're more so, of a hybrid player though aren't you there's a reason i don't play these clubs <laughs> so the dhy wins dispersion for both of us on the square yardage of that ellipse so before the book comes out with the numbers, okay. we have to decide who's winning technology. Oh, yeah. Which one of those two is going to win, if any, on the technology? So I'll tell you where I am. Half a point each. You can't split them. They've both got weight in. They're both hollow. They, they're the same club with a different brand on them, aren't they? In theory. So half a point each for technology. Nothing stands out enough to give it a point. It's not very often I do this, but I'm going to agree with you. You do that very, uh, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> so half a point each for technology. Okay. So if we get the book out. Yeah. Dan, feels and sound, half a point. Yeah. Looks, tailor-made. Technology, half a point. Distance, dispersion, tailor-made, giving the tailor-made a 4-1 victory for you. Wow. I mean, that's a big jump, isn't it? It is for a tightless player. Yeah. <laughs> but I am not contracted in that little area. Well, at the end of the day, this, is, this proves that this is completely impartial. This is what yes. we feel about the club that's brought. If we look at my numbers, feel and sound, half a point each. Yeah. Looks, I gave it to the title list. Technology, half a point each. And then distance dispersion to the TaylorMade. So I am 3-2 to the TaylorMade. That gives the TaylorMade a 7-3 victory in this wow. overall that is amazing, comparison. Really, isn't it? It is. Is that what you expected no. when we got going from no. the get-go of this video? No, I thought you would like the look of the tight list, yeah. personally. Um, and I thought the tight list would possibly outdo this, even though it had um, a week aloft. But they're, they're very hard to split. They are. It is, the only thing that's split them, really, is the opinion-based side of it. Well, there you have it. There is your compare or your head to head with these two. Well, fantastic clubs, really, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they're going to do a great job for so many golfers out there that are looking for maybe just that little bit more help when it comes to, 
you know, the long irons because what you're seeing with lots of golfers or what we see with lots of golfers is as soon as you get up into the longer irons, you're gonna to start to see those, those distances kind of come closer together. So your four and your five iron might actually be tiny numbers, yeah. whereas the gaps between maybe your six iron and your five iron might be, might be the correct gap, should we say. So these companies bringing out clubs like this only there to try and help us. And it's whether you're a player that's kind of coming up from irons into the long iron, or whether you're a player that prefers maybe hybrids, and you, but, you, but you want to kind of find a happy medium between the two, then maybe the Taylor May kind of works for you. So, but we'd like to hear down in the comments below, wouldn't we? Yep. What do you think? Would you pick one over the other? Do you play one over the other? We'd like to hear down in the comments. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel and you like what you're seeing from this showdown, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. And should we see everyone again very soon? Probably next week. Probably next week. See, see you soon. Then.